Utility Arborist Association, Environmental Stewardship. Biological Controls, Integrated Vegetation Management, IVM. Using compatible vegetation as an ally on the right of way. A UAA production with support from Hub International. Preventing trees from interfering with power lines and pipelines is important in maintaining a safe and reliable supply of energy. But did you know that vegetation managers can ensure that utilities are good stewards of the environment as well? Consider this example, using two different methods for managing utility rights of way for high voltage transmission lines. Meet Randy. As a professional utility vegetation manager, he oversees electric transmission line rights of way. He makes sure the vegetation is a safe distance away and that maintenance personnel and contractors have proper access. One method Randy employs is to mow the entire right of way from edge to edge. Randy regularly mows this area to achieve the utility's primary goal of safe, reliable, transmission of electricity. His routine mowing also helps Randy's utility maintain compliance with government regulations. Now meet Serena. She also manages her rights of way for safety and reliability and she uses proven best practices to achieve additional benefits. There are a few areas on her system where mowing is necessary. But in most areas, her approach divides the right-of-way into a wire zone directly under the conductors and border zones along the edges. In her border zones, she allows a mixed growth of shrubs and small trees whose maximum height is well below the height of the conductors. Most importantly though, Serena's management focuses on establishing compatible vegetation on the right of way. Her familiarity with Integrated Vegetation Management, or IVM, including the use of biological controls, still ensures the safe and reliable transmission of electricity, just like Randy. But by using biological controls, Serena can establish and maintain compatible low-growing plant communities that naturally resist invasion of trees and other incompatible plants on her right way. Serena's biological control methods include plants such as grasses, ferns, forbs, and where appropriate, low-growing shrubs that compete with incompatible trees. Both the low-growing plants in the wire zone and the shrubs and small trees in the border zone create habitat, including food and cover for birds and small mammals that consume tree seeds and deer and rabbits that browse incompatible woody vegetation. These animals also act as biological controls. Serena used to manage all of her rights of ways just like Randy before she decided to convert to an IVM program. After making the switch, Serena first began with a similar right-of-way mowing. But soon after, Serena also performed a cut stubble application of herbicide, something Randy doesn't do. Serena's use of a selective herbicide controlled the roots of the woody plants, but did not affect the grasses present and also opened up space for the establishment of other compatible vegetation. While Serena's approach initially added cost, it paid off in the long run by keeping the number of incompatible plants low and reducing the need for continued heavy maintenance. And as we will discover, there are other benefits as well. Serena knew that successfully transitioning to an IVM plan would require time and expertise, so she remained confidently committed to her approach every step of the way. Five years later, there's already minimal regrowth of unsuitable vegetation. 
and for what regrowth does occur, Serena controls it with spot spraying and hand cutting instead of mowing, which is less costly and reduces fuel consumption and air pollution. <whistles> Meanwhile, at the same five year mark, Randy's stem count is more than twice as dense as Serena's and grew back 70% faster. He has to mow the right of way again to control his aggressive plants and his collective maintenance costs now surpass Serena's. Another five years later, Randy is still mowing the same regrowth to maintain proper and safe vegetation levels, using heavy equipment and consuming fossil fuels. Meanwhile, mostly low-growing native plants cover Serena's right-of-way. These are part of Serena's biological controls, and they're contributing to a significant reduction in her maintenance costs. Her native plants are also attracting birds, deer, bees, and butterflies to the right-of-way. Over time, Serena's right-of-way is converted to a healthy ecosystem, thanks to biological controls where plants and animals help reduce incompatible plant growth. In addition, local residents are now using the right-of-way for recreation as an outdoor school classroom, and Serena is having a positive impact on her environment and community. So remember, when considering how to best manage your right-of-way, be like Serena. Turn to integrated vegetation management and invest in biological controls. Your utility, community, and native plants and animals will thank you. For more information, visit the Environmental Stewardship section of the Utility Arborist Association website or contact a member of the UAA Environmental Stewardship Committee.